Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the 20th episode of the Scaling Rails screencast series, sponsored by New Relic. This is part two of three episodes where we're taking a look at a couple cutting edge libraries to help you scale your Rails app. In this episode, we're going to be looking at libraries to prevent memory bloat, namely Rackbug, Memory Logic, and Oink. A few weeks ago, Sudara Williams wrote an article on the Engine Yard blog called That's Not a Memory Leak, It's Bloat. You see, he was addressing the misconception that sometimes you see Mongrel instances consuming like 150 meg of RAM. People sort of assume that that's because Ruby is leaking memory. And that's not usually the case. Usually the case with Rails applications is that you've got certain actions which are instantiating like hundreds of active record objects, sometimes even thousands. So how do you combat this? Well, you need to do a little refactoring in your Rails app. How do you do that? Well, there's some tools to help. He recommends going over three different tools, which we're going to cover in the screencast. The first is Rackbug, the second is Memory Logic, and the third is Oink. So let's jump into it by looking at Rackbug by Brian Helmkamp. Rackbug is a debugging toolbar for Rack applications, which means you can only use it with Rails 2.3 or higher because it's a piece of middleware. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So first off, I'm going to install the plugin. And I need to do a little bit of configuration. I need to add this piece of middleware into my middleware stack. So I'm going to open up the development.rb file and write config middleware use rack bug. You may be familiar with this line from a previous scaling rails screencast showing, you know, how you insert middleware into your rail stack. And now I'm going to add a little configuration. I'm going to add a password, so I have to type in the password to get access to the toolbar, and a secret key which will allow me to run database queries from the toolbar. So from here, I can go ahead and start up my server. And before I can get access to the toolbar, I'm going to have to install the toolbar bookmarklet. <laughs> so to do that, I go to this um, secret URL here. And uh, don't worry, this is all in the readme, so you don't have to remember it. And there's the bookmarklet. I simply drag that into my browser to install it. And now when I go back to the previous page and I click that bookmarklet, I'm now prompted for the password. And there we go. Now we've got all sorts of data up in this toolbar. The first of which gives me the response time for this action. Breaks it down by user, system, and total CPU time. Next up, it's got the environment variables, rack environment variables. This includes the session, any cookies, any additional environment variables that we may be interested in. Next up, it gives us the number of queries that this particular action ran. So we can see all the queries there. Over on the right hand side, we can show backtrace, which will show us exactly where in our code this query got triggered by. We can also select here, which will run that query against our database, so we can see exactly what our database returned. And then we can also explain that query, so we can see what indexes are being used, which can be really useful if we're tracking down a slow query. The next part of the toolbar tells us how many active record objects were instantiated for this action, and in this case we have three post objects and three user objects. If this was say, you know, like a hundred active record objects, then we might want to optimize. It also shows us what caching was used, what templates were used for this particular action, and then we have the log. This is basically what you would see if you looked inside your development.log or production.log, but it's right here, which might be really convenient if you're running Rackbug on your staging server so you don't have to go into the console to get the logs. The last bit of information that Rackbug gives us is up in the top right hand corner. And what this is telling us is that the Ruby process which rendered this action is currently occupying 35 megs of RAM. And this delta over to the left here is showing us um, from the time this request came in to the time that it was finished, memory increased by 4 kilobytes. So obviously if we had an action that increased memory by say, you know, 30 megabytes, we might want to try optimizing. 
The next library for reducing memory bloat is called Memory Logic, and it was created by Ben Johnson, who is always eating a gigantic slice of pizza wherever he goes. So Memory Logic basically adds some additional details to our log files. It adds the process ID and gives us memory usage. Let me show you what that looks like. So we just installed the plugin, and now we need to add a little bit of configuration. So we go into our application controller, include memory logic, run our server. Now we're going to go to our browser and uh, click around a bunch so we can get some data. And now if we take a look inside of our log files, we're going to see a lot of printouts that's telling us the memory usage for this particular Ruby process. So at each step, it actually shows us what the memory was. So if we saw a dramatic increase at any one particular step, well that got, might give us a hint as to where our memory bloat is being caused from. Um, it also gives us overall memory usage when it finishes, and it also shows us the Ruby process ID that rendered this action. This is really useful because if you're looking at your you know, production server and you see a certain process spike in memory, you can jump into your logs and search through them using this particular process ID. You know, Keep an eye on memory each step of the way to figure out exactly where the memory bloat started to occur. The last library I'm going to show you is called Oink by Noah Davis. Noah basically took the memory logic gem and decided to add a little bit more information and then get you some useful metrics so you can quickly figure out what part of your application is the biggest memory hog. Get it? Hog. Oink. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to install the plugin. And we need to add a little bit of configuration, just like we did with the memory logic plugin. We're going to include memory usage logger so we can figure out the memory usage per action. And we're going to include the instance type counter, which is going to tell us the number of active record objects that are being instantiated per action. So let, let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to start up my server. And if I take a look at the logs, I can see that it's giving me um, total memory usage and process ID like the previous plugin, and then also showing me instantiation breakdown. So it's showing me um, you know, that we have three user objects that were instantiated and three post objects that were instantiated. So obviously if this was like over 100, um, that would be bad. Now, um, in order to get the metrics part of Oink working, we need to install the HODL 3000 compliant logger, which is going to make our logs print out in a slightly different format. So once we install that library file, we're going to require it in our environment.rb, and then we're going to start up our server and click around to get a bunch of data. Cool. And now, once we've done that, we can run some server metrics. We can run script oink threshold. Now the threshold, what that's doing is we're going to tell it, show us all the actions that increased memory by more than 75 megabytes. And obviously there aren't any because we're running in development mode and it's a very simple application. So we're going to set the threshold to zero. What this is going to show me is the worst requests, the requests that increased memory the most. And in this case, um, the index action increased memory by 468 kilobytes and show by 268 once, you know, these all happen once. And then at the bottom it aggregates them all so we can see that the index action um, 20 times increased memory, which was bad. If we ran Oink on a much bigger Rails application, we might see something that looks like this. So here we can see there's some actions here that are increasing memory by over 100 megabytes. Right, this is not good. This could be easily causing a lot of memory bloat, and we might want to try optimizing these methods as much as we can. So there you have it, three libraries to help prevent memory bloat in your Rails applications. Coming up next, we'll be looking at the really two libraries and one service that'll help your Rails application scale. And don't forget that all of these libraries 
still don't replace the need to have New Relic RPM installed, right? Because if you reduce the memory bloat, New Relic RPM is where you're going to look to really see, you know, how effective you're getting, right? So you can compare, you know, yesterday's results to today's optimized results. So you can really get metrics on how much your Rails application has improved and how much you've been able to reduce your memory footprint. Hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks for watching.